Today's Tips to Your Mailbag question comes from Alaska. Dear Robert, I have just finished making my guitar following your online videos and it came out great. I'm worried about scratching it and want to make a pick guard. Can you show me how this is done? Tom in Alaska. Well, sure Tom, let's get right at it. This is pick guard material that I got from LMI. It comes with several different designs from clear to your vintage tortoiseshell look. It comes with adhesive backing or without. So let me show you how to make a pick guard using these materials. The first thing to do is know the shape you want and I'm going to use an old pick guard to make a new one. You can also go to LMI's website where there are downloadable PDF files with various pick guard shapes. I'm going to start by placing my template on my pick guard material and tracing around it. Because of the paper backing material, it's somewhat hard to see your line, but if you catch it just right in the light, you can see it. And you want to turn this over to cut it. That's why I traced it on the back side. For some reason, the scissors seem to cut better if I'm cutting from the back side. So I'm going to cut up close to my line, but not quite all the way to it. I also want to be very careful that I try not to leave any sharp edges. The procedure for cutting out the clear pickguard material is the same. Now just to clean up the edges a little bit, I like to come in with a small sanding block and make sure that there's no sharp edges on there. Everything's nice and round. You can also sand right up to your line that way if you like. For the inside radius here, I'm just going to use a piece of my uh, spindle sander to come in and do that. And this pig guard is ready to go. Now the tortoise shell material is a little harder to work with. In order to cut it, it's very brittle, so you have to heat it up. Now I'm going to use a heat gun. You could also use a hair dryer. And I've heard of also people just drop it in a pan of hot water for a few minutes. I'm also going to double side tape my template onto this material. And I'm doing it from the back side because that's where I'm going to be cutting it from. Now you want to be very careful when you heat this. You don't need a lot of heat because the material will shrink. That's usually about all it takes. I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to cut it over size. With my template cut out, I'm now ready to take it to my sander. I'm going to use a spindle sander and sand right up to my template outline there. Once that's done, I'll take the template off and then finish it by hand. I now have the pick guard material sanded flush with my template, so I'm going to remove the template and now use my sanding block to remove any little sharp tips left by the sand. Now if you're making a replacement pick guard for your guitar and the soundboard has oxidized with the ultraviolet light over time, then you need to be really on your pit guard tolerances on the size so that you don't have any of that discoloration showing around the edge of the pit guard. Something else you can do is come in and use a razor blade like a scraper and just scrape the edge slightly, make sure it's at a 90 degree angle and just clean it up. Some people also like to put a bevel on the edge of the pick guard because this pick guard material is a little thicker and it looks a little more refined if you just bevel the edge slightly. So come in with your razor blade, hold it at a slight angle, and just scrape that bevel into it. If you wanted to, you could also make a template out of plywood or MDF or something. Stick this to it, take it to your router table, and run a chamfer bit around it. But this bevel gets scraped in very quickly, so it's not a big deal. Something else to be careful with, with this pick guard material, is that it scratches very easily. 
So if you happen to get scratches on the top of it during the manufacturing process here, you just take it to your buffer and buff any of those scratches out of it. You can also get a little shinier edge on there instead of a dull edge if you do that. Okay, I'm going to go to my buffing wheel and get some of the scratches out that I put on it during the manufacturing process. If you don't have a buffing machine, you could also use a clear plastic polish or cleaner to buff it by hand. To hold the pig cart, I just double-sided tape it to a piece of plywood. That allows me to come in and use it on the buffing wheel without worrying about getting my fingers. I now have a nice shiny pick guard that's ready to be installed on the guitar. Now, if you're installing this pick guard material or the clear pick guard material, it already comes with a self adhesive on the back. You just peel and stick. Once it's on the guitar, then you peel the film off the top side, revealing a nice shiny surface. This pick guard material is a little different. There's no adhesive on the back. So you can either use a spray adhesive or a transfer paper. First of all, make sure the back of the pit guard is clean. You don't want any Klingons or any goobers, and those are technical terms. Those will show up through the pit guard later. So now I take the transfer paper that I got from LMI. Peel and stick to the back of the pit guard. I can now use my razor blade to trim that right up next to the pit guard. Now to place the pick guard on your guitar, there's more to it than just peel and stick. You want to be very careful with placement. You also want to be very careful that you don't get any air bubbles or debris under there. So make sure that the guitar is clean. You then take your pick guard material. I'm not going to do it on this guitar because this guitar is already sold and the guy doesn't want a pick guard. But I'll show you how to do it. I'll talk you through it. First of all, position the pick guard where you want it. Next, come in and place a piece of tape along one edge. And that's going to work as a hinge. You can now lift the pit guard like so, and when you flop it back down, it's going to go right back in place in the correct position. Something else you want to do is take a spray bottle that has a couple drops of liquid detergent in it and just spray it on the surface. Remove your adhesive backing and then just flop the pick guard over into place. Lay it down. There will be water under there. If you want to place a paper towel or something inside your guitar, that's a good idea because some of the water will drip down into the sound hole and if you have a label in there, it could be bad news for that. It could also leave marks in the guitar. Once the pick guard is in place, you've sprayed the water on there, the soapy water, you've removed the adhesive backing, you've flopped it over back into place on your hinge here, on your tape hinge. I then come in with a hard rubber sanding block and just remove the water out towards the edges. This helps keep you from getting any air bubbles or anything in there. So just work the water out towards the edges like that. When you're all done, clean up the excess water, remove your tape, and then just peel the, the clear cellophane cover off the top and you've got a brand new shiny pit guard on the guitar. The process for the tortoiseshell pit guard is exactly the same. Position it where you want it, place a piece of tape as a hinge. You're then able to lift it up, remove the covering over the adhesive backing, spray a little water on there, flop it right down into place, and then squeegee out the excess. And you, once again, have a nice shiny pit guard. So Tom, as you can see, making a pit guard is not a big problem. I personally find it more difficult to install it correctly. Anyway, I hope this information helps, and happy playing.